talks about population and what a sample actually is. If I was looking for a population, would it be fair if I want a population of the United States, would it be fair for me just to look at the middle school? How about it just the high school? What would I have to do? How about just Florida? No, because there's different ethnicities that live in different areas. So you'd actually have to find a way to get a random selection of people and random ages from every individual state in the United States. So I wanted to look at the true population this year. Okay? So if you take a look, they put this little chart off to the side. And at the bottom, where it's part A in, it says, what's the average number of tomatoes on 10 plants that were randomly selected? So we're going to randomly select 10 plants, but we're going to randomly select all of us. We're going to randomly select the same 10. Is that possible? No. Not. It's possible, but not probable. Okay? So we're going to roll the dice. And the first plant that you pick is going to come from 3 and 4, which is 45. So go ahead and write down 45 as being your first plant. Just on a sheet of paper or on that line there, it doesn't matter. Because how many plants do we have to pick? Uh, you can, but you might have to put a two box beside it. Because we might get it again, right? Everybody understand what we're doing? I've selected one plant. What am I going to do now? I'm going to do it again. Now i got a three and a one. Three and a one, 29. Four and five, which is? 22. Three and six. Forty-three. We're going to do ten. One and one. Eight. Four and six. Four and one. One and five. Six and five. Eleven. Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Six and five. Six and five. Thirty-three. You said eleven. Six and one. Eighteen. So, if we're going to average them, what do we need to do? Add, Add them all up and divide it by 10. 10. Okay? I got this. So, add them all up. Just take a pen. Don't get nervous. Don't get I got twenty seven point seven. Okay. Should have come up to 27.7. There was 277 total points if you add it up. And if I divide that by 10, I'd move the decimal one decimal place. Okay? Everybody with me? Understand what we've done. Number two, or part B, says 
Alternately, the gardener decides to choose the plants that are in the first row. What's the average in the first row? So, add them all up and divide by what? Not by 10 this time, by what? By 6. Because there's only six numbers. The first row would be this row. Rows are this way, columns are this way. 8 plus 9 plus 13 plus 18 plus 24 plus 15 is a total of 87. And we're going to divide it by 6, which is 14.5. Everybody with me? If you flip, I think, to the next page, you're going to see where it says reflect. How do the averages you get with each sampling method compare to the average of the entire population, which is 28.25? We ended up with 27.7 and 14.5. Those are the two numbers we ended up with. Come on. We ended up with 27.7 and 14.5. This was the first method. This was the second method. They said the entire population's average was 28.25. How do they both compare? They're both what? How did they compare to this? When we talk about compare, when we're talking about numbers, we usually talk about greater than, less than, or equal. Both are less. <coughs> Both are less, right? What can you tell me? What can you tell me? Which method's closer? The first method is better or closer. In number two, it says, why might the first method give a closer average than the second method? No, but why? Why did it come out closer? Mm, possibly. Okay. I think it's because we picked what? We picked random samples versus picking something from a particular row, column, something that was set. Look at the first row. What can you tell me about those numbers compared to the rest of the numbers on the chart? They're all smaller. So if I pick the first row, my answer was obviously going to be what? Smaller. And so if you were asked to explain it, we had random samples, and it would be kind of versus the first row, which was all what? They were all small. They were all less. Everybody see why this might not be my favorite section as a math teacher? Would we all have the same answer? No. Especially if we hadn't all rolled the same numbers. It's possible that you'd come up with a number that was much greater than the number that was there. If we did them randomly though, the average here and the average that was here should be pretty close. Would it have to be? No. It is possible that when I randomly threw dice that all of the numbers that I would have rolled would have all been small numbers or they would have all been large numbers 
That's what random means. There's no way to determine that. Okay, so I have a quick joke. 99% of statistics... Including the one that you just quoted yes. me. <laughs> I hate statistics. 98% of statistics are made up on the spot. Made that up on the spot. Including the one I just quoted. You said that before. I'm sure I have. <laughs> Random samples versus biased samples. No, I'm pretty sure I have not. There are some jokes I could not talk about in class. Yeah. Yeah. Just say. Random samples versus a bias sample. This is what I was talking about earlier when I said if I was going to go to a baseball game and I was going to ask a question from that group of people about sports, would that be a random sample or would that be a bias sample? Bias, bias because I'm, I'm definitely questioning a particular group of people. It would be no different than how you ask a question could be a random way to ask it or a biased way to ask it. Here would be the question that I might ask. Lacey, what's your favorite sport? Soccer. soccer. I might come to you and say, is soccer your favorite sport? No. Which one was random and which one was biased? The second one was biased. I was definitely biased when I asked the second question because I mentioned what to start with? Soccer. And I might even elaborate on the fact that, you know, soccer players do such and such and such and such. And so what is your favorite sport? And I've already encouraged them to say then what? Soccer. There's a difference between asking a random question that is unbiased and then asking something that's biased. Anybody that's watched any amount of TV at all has seen a toothpaste commercial that says nine out of ten dentists recommend yeah. this. Okay? It's a statistical number. And I'm going to tell you they could have randomly asked a million doctors and only kept ten of them in their sample group. The ten that had the right answer, by the way, they didn't have to keep all of them. And by the way, they may have gone in and ask the question of the dentist, would you recommend Sensodyne to your patient? Okay. If they say yes, then 9 out of 10 dentists that were surveyed would have said yes to that. Was their question biased or unbiased? Biased. Bias. Bias, because they mentioned their product to start with. They don't mention that when you see an advertisement on TV, do they? They never talk about whether they truly picked a random sample or whether their sample was a biased sample to start with. We need to be able to distinguish between the two. So, local res residents were surveyed about adding stoplights at the corner of Main Street. This you're not going to find in your pack, but you don't need to write it down. You're going to see that this is pretty simple. There's no concrete right or wrong necessarily. But we're going to find right and wrong in the way this is worded. So they're adding stoplights at the corner of Main Street and Perry Avenue. Determine whether each survey question may be biased. And they want you to explain. A, are stoplights needed at the intersection of Main and Perry? Biased or non-biased? Biased. Why? Did it say why they wanted to put them in? It's simply asking you, are they needed? Is it biased or non-biased? Non-biased. Non -biased. They've not given you any predetermined information on whether you should or shouldn't have a stoplight. They're just asking you, should there be one there? Anybody understand the difference? In B. Fewer accidents occur at intersections with stoplights than intersections that don't have them. Would you be in favor of having stoplights installed to make the intersection at Main Perry safer? Biased or non-biased? Biased. Definitely biased. 
They're definitely trying to get people to say, I think there needs to be a traffic light at that corner. Installing a new stoplight will require detours that will decrease traffic to local businesses up to a month. Should stoplights be installed at the corner of Main and Eric? But one's in favor. This one is what? This one's again. And I can certainly see why we would ask questions one way versus another. If I want an outcome, and your parents are going to hate me for this, but listen, if you want a correct response from your parents, you need to learn how to ask a question of them. You need to make sure that you're asking biased questions to start with. You do. If you want a yes or a no answer, you need to figure out how to ask a question of them so you're getting more yes responses than you are no responses. Don't tell your parents I told you that, but it's the truth. There's certainly a better way to ask a question than to just go up to mom and dad and say, mom and dad, can I stay up till midnight? You've got to find a way to ask a question where they'll give you the yes yes answer that you're looking for about staying up till midnight. Very good. That might be something that you could do, right? That you might be able to find a way to work in schoolwork. Anything that you can use to get the response that you want. That's why I don't like statistical information. It's because most statistics, in fact, are what? biased in some way, the way they ask the question. And it might not even be the words that were in the question. It might be in how the person asked, how the person was dressed, how the person responded to the other person. Lots of things can bias a survey that's done in person. D, should stoplights be installed at the corner of Main and Terrace? Non-biased. Non -biased. Everybody understand the difference between bias and non-bias? Yeah. <coughs> and that's your assignment. It's simple enough, and I'm going to tell you it's very difficult to go over tomorrow because some of the questions, there's lots of right and wrong answers. Some of the questions are cut and dry. They're either biased or non -biased. So is that what we're writing down? Think about what it says. And it says of what? Seventh grade boys. Is it a random sample if you only choose from this class? No. No. So you should, during the course of the day, randomly ask, and by the way, ladies, ask some girls, please. Don't be, don't be embarrassed by asking a guy. Just ask a girl what shoe size she wears. Okay? But, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you that what you don't want to do is choose all of your students from what? From the same class. You want to, you can choose one person from this class. But if I really wanted to get six random samples. I'd be better off to choose people that weren't that I never even saw. Just walk up to somebody where? That's crazy. In the but hallway and say, can you tell me what shoe size you wear? Because it's part of my math class. No, it's not random. You may start.